Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Taxpayers can get last-minute filing tips on irs.gov. IRS Tax Tips 2020-78, July 1st, 2020. The July deadline for filing a 2019 tax return is near, but IRS Tax Help is available 24 hours a day on irs.gov. IRS Whether filing a tax return, requesting an extension, or making payment, the IRS website can help taxpayers answer most questions and avoid long waits for phone assistance. So the 2019 deadline, you'll recall, has been pushed forward. It was typically, you know, 2000 last 2019 last year, typically due on April 15th, generally of the following year, with which would be April 15th, 2020. It got pushed out to July 15th now. So now it's becoming due on July 15th. If you need help for uh, the 2019 tax filing, then you can get help at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Electronic filing is the best option. So the IRS is pushing, of course, the electronic filing. They're trying to have more options for that. There are some options that uh, may even be free options to file the electronic tax return if your tax return is a fairly basic return, which is typically measured by it having below a, a standard set of uh, income, below an income threshold will typically be the case. So electronic filing is the best option. According to the IRS, the taxpayers who file electronically will likely have fewer mistakes on their tax return. That's because, of course, the, as the tax software has gotten more complex, the IRS is typically asking for more information at the same time. So you almost need the software even for basic returns at this point in time uh, to do the, to do even just basically a basic return. But on the plus side, of course, many of that software, there's more available and there's cheaper options for that software. Back to the text, electronic filing options like IRS free file. There's links to the electronic filing options and the IRS free file here. There'll be a link to this in the description or commercial tax software. Uh, do the math, flag common errors and ask missing information. And that's going to be one of the major features of tax software if you use a software for yourself like a standard like a small software for individual tax return software rather than like a cpa firm type software that's there to manage multiple clients then like an hr block or or, or a um, turbo tax type of software which is owned by intuit uh, the owner of quickbooks if you use one of those type of softwares it usually has an interview type process that'll kind of help you out with just like the interview to, the data input then uh, being in a systematic way and kind of like an interviewing type of process then it can ask you standard questions like the standard question of you know if you're able to put money into an IRA or something like that it might suggest that type of question so uh, those are some options on the paid software obviously you have to pay for them if you go to the IRS free file then you may be able to use the IRS free file software which would be nice as you look at the free file options however you want to consider and make sure that uh, you're fulfilling whatever state requirements you need as well. So we're looking at the IRS. Uh, the state requirements are going to be separate by state. The states might follow the IRS in terms of kind of the formatting of the return. And you might need to actually give the federal return to the state, but they're going to be different. So you want to make sure that uh, whatever software you are using, you, you, you cover both of those things with the software. It'd be nice to be have one software doing, obviously, uh, both of those things because obviously you can fill out both the state and the Fed a lot more easily at the same point in time if the software is able to cover both of them. Back to the text. Taxpayers with income over 69000 who know who know how to complete their tax returns can use the free file fillable forms. So you also have the free form, the, the, the free file fillable forms option that you can use. This is a bit more complex options. I, I wouldn't suggest this unless you're pretty good at it. If you want to practice, uh, you know, putting together information, the forms, you could find the forms, of course, on the IRS website, as well as the instructions for them. Back to the text, extension to file request. Taxpayers can request an extension to file until October 15th. So the tax deadline has been pushed up for 2019 filing, which is usually filed in 2020 by April 15th, but then it got pushed out to July 15th. And usually on April 15th, you can usually file an extension from April 15th to like October 15th. But now, of course, the tax returns due in July, the normal date is due in July, but you still have the option for an extension at that point in time to push it out to they haven't extended the extended due date, which is still October 15th. So you could still put it on extension then, but you have to file that now by July 15th in order to extend 
to October 15th. So there's a link to the extension file option here. There'll be a link to this in the description back to the text. This is not an extension of time to pay. And that's a huge point here. Note that they've been pushing out the payment deadlines for 2020 taxes as well as the filing requirements for 2019. So the fact that they've pushed, pushed out deadlines for payment uh, and they pushed out payment deadlines for 2020 and the and the filing deadline doesn't does the two things aren't the same right so if they push out the filing deadline that doesn't necessarily mean that they're pushing out the payment deadline when when you actually owe the money so remember the tax return is basically set up this way in a perfect world yeah what pay the tax for example in 2019 during 2019 and then when you file the tax return in 2020 for 2019 taxes it should in a perfect world just be an information return basically saying this is how much I owed, I've already paid it, and just reporting that to the IRS. Now, it's never going to work that way because the tax code is too complex, and therefore you usually try to pay a little bit more because you, ha you have no idea what the tax actually will be because it's too complex. So you have to pay a little bit more and hopefully get a refund at the end. But you got to remember that the payment, they plan the payments to happen during uh, the year that is covered. So when you're thinking about filing requirements, you want to make sure to file on time. Why? Because you're going to avoid the penalty for filing late. But filing on time does not rem remove the penalty that you may get for paying late, which is not necessarily tied to when you file. So you want to check the payment dates and the filing dates and then avoid the penalties, you know, on, on both of those in accordance with whatever you got to do. To do so back to the text taxpayers must estimate their tax liability on the form and pay as much as they can by july 15th to avoid possible penalties and interest so if you're going to go on extension it's a very basic form to go on extension when you go on extension you typically will have an estimated tax payment that you still should be making at that point in time if you think you're going to owe money if you're not going to owe money then you obviously you wouldn't make a payment at that time because you're going to get a refund you just haven't filed it yet but if you're going to if you're going to owe money then you want to estimate it and pay it at that point in time and then you're going to say well i don't have no idea how much i'm going to owe because it's like it's been a weird year it was a weird year last year even before like the weird year this year but i don't know how much i'm going to pay that's why because i can't put it together yet well you still want to estimate it because uh, if you end up owing money later then and and you didn't pay the estimate then you'll probably end up owing late payment penalties and uh and the interest on it so you want to uh to, to estimate it to avoid basically the penalties and interest would be the objective back to the text individual tax filers regardless of income can use the free file to electronically request an automatic tax filing extension so you can go to free file to go through the extension process it should be an easy process to go on extension back to the text to get the extension taxpayers must estimate their tax liability on this form and should pay any amount due taxpayers can get an automatic extension of time to file when they pay their federal income taxes using irs direct pay the electronic federal tax payment system a credit or debit card there's links to those options here there'll be a link to this in the description they should pay by filing deadline and select extension as the reason for the payment people can mail a form 4868 application for automatic extension of time to file u.s individual income tax returns there's a link to that here they must complete print and mail form 4868 to the irs by july 15th filing deadline so if you want to do it by the by mail which is probably the slowest way again the irs is kind of backed up on the mail and with the social distancing and all that kind of stuff so you might want to do it electronically but theoretically as long as you have mailed it by july 15th it should be okay they, they you want to kind of prove that make sure that uh, they that you have proof of that so if they kind of send you something saying that you have a late payment or filing penalty you could say no i have the evidence that i sent this in uh on before the deadline and you can have that evidence now if you do it electronically it might be a little bit easier to have that uh evidence and they, and they might be less likely to kind of mess things up over there considering again they're kind of backed up on the mail as far as we can tell at this point in time back to the text refund status option taxpayers may have their refund electronically deposited into their bank or other financial account they can check on their refund by using where's my refund there's a link to where's my refund here that you can use to kind of track the refund that uh, you should be getting and kind of ask the question and look towards the question of where is my refund 
Uh, you can get that on the irs.gov or download the irs2go mobile app and get the most up-to-date information. There's a link to the irs2go mobile app here. Mail a paper return to the right address. Taxpayers should check where to file for their state or on irs.gov uh, so they can mail to the correct address. So if you're mailing the tax return, and again, the IRS is going to emphasize not to mail the tax return unless you have to. You should use the tax software because it's going to be faster. They really want you to use the tax software, and they, they're kind of slow on the mailing thing right now. But if you're going to mail it in, make sure you mail it to the right place, and the right place will depend on your location. So then you want to check where to file, and you can go to the link. There's a link here that will, will help you out with that, and then you can uh, make sure to mail that. To the right place now if you're going to get a refund then obviously mailing the tax returns going to take a little bit longer to get the refund now if you're gonna if you owe money then uh you know maybe maybe you know why not mail, mail it you know might take a longer before they, they process it and cash it possibly i don't know they'll probably take the cat the check and cash it and then wait forever to process anyway if you're getting a refund you'll probably get it faster if you were to do uh the electronic format and if you are are paying, then maybe mailing doesn't doesn't hurt you. Uh, could benefit you if, if it's going to take longer for them to process it. Possibly, I don't know about that. And back to the text: Taxpayers who mail a tax return will experience a longer wait. So whether that be good or bad, longer wait. Payment options: Taxpayers can go to irs.gov to pay their balance using the IRS Direct Pay or another payment option. There's links to those payment options here. The electronic payment options are secure, and taxpayers receive immediate confirmation, which is nice because again, you want the confirmation. If the IRS says you owe them money, you want to make sure you have the confirmation when you make the payments to the IRS. Make sure that you designate what the payment is going to. Is the payment going for 2019 tax return? Is it for 2020 tax return? Is it for business versus personal? If you have multiple things you're paying the IRS for, don't just send them money and expect them to kind of apply it out to the proper place. Uh, they, they're not they're not good at that, right? You got to tell them exactly where it's going to go. And then if you get a letter, then you should be able to say that uh, I have this payment that went towards that particular thing in, in a perfect world. I know it's not you know, that doesn't always happen perfectly, but that's kind of the, that's the idea. Back to the text. The IRS has, has options for taxpayers who owe taxes but cannot afford to pay. There's links to those options here. Installment agreements. Qualified taxpayers who cannot afford to pay their taxes in full can choose to pay their taxes over time through an installment agreement. There's links to the installment agreement here. Unfortunately, I would predict that, uh, and I would, you know, many more people might be in the position at this point where they can't pay their taxes for like possibly the first time that that's ever happened for many people because of this whole condition they've postponed tax payment deadlines for 2020 and filing deadlines for 2019 but that doesn't remove the the tax liability it postpones it which means people are probably going to get backed up on the taxes and have to owe multiple payments at one point in time which i would assume could lead to people not being able to pay that lump sum at some point in time so there might be more people that are in the case where they need an installment agreement. So if you're in that situation, if it's the first time that you you know you just can't pay the tax liability, what you do not want to do, don't just uh, not do the return. I mean, you still want to tell, you still want to be on general the general rules. You want to be on good faith terms with the IRS. So if, as long as you're uh, talking to them and communicating honestly with them, that's usually the better policy. Which means that if you're filing 2019 and you can't pay it. Then you file the 2019, you tell them this is the tax liability, here's as much as I can pay at this point in time, and then you request an installment agreement to pay the rest. And then you can set up an agreement and that'll avoid, that process will hopefully avoid as many penalties as possible. Penalties like late filing penalty if you just don't file and you decide to file later because you couldn't, you know, you just, you know, you can't pay the tax, so you just don't file it, right? If you don't do that, then you could add to the liability to a late payment and then the interest could accumulate. Now, if you have an installment agreement, you will still have interest accumulating upwards. It doesn't remove the interest, but at least you know what the interest is at that point in time, and it should remove at least some or part of the penalties for not filing for having late payment, and it, it you know removes some of the burden and worry about not filing and getting any 
letters from the IRS are always kind of worrisome, especially if they're, you know, kind of threatening some other type of collection action or, or something like that. So it's usually best to be in, in good stand. It's not typically difficult to do that either. Put in the installment agreement together. Uh, you could do that in a, in a few different ways. You don't have to actually talk to anybody to do that. And then if you're in good standing with the IRS, they typically correspond with you by, by mail <laughs> most of the time. And, uh, and as long as you're responding to them in good faith, then then you're you you're typically you know you're okay you're okay going forward so setting up the installment agreement's pretty pretty straightforward process to do and so there's a couple ways to do it let's get back to the text they can use the online payment agreement application to set up a payment plan the taxpayers can also request a payment agreement by filing form uh, 9465 installment agreement request there's a link to that form here they should download and mail the form to the IRS along with a tax return, IRS bill, or notice. So if you're filing the tax return, you could, you could do this process along with the uh, filing of the tax return.